So I'm just going to uh, go through some of the, the non-drug evidence for you uh, in terms of managing behaviour. Now, the kind of myth is that there's lots of evidence around drugs and not much evidence around non-drug treatments. And actually, that is a myth. Um, Jill Livingston from University College London did a really nice literature review of this a couple of years ago. There's actually over 170 randomised controlled trials of non-drug interventions for behavioural symptoms. Now, a lot of them are smaller than the drug trials, but nevertheless, that's, that's quite a big literature. It's quite a big evidence base. Now, you'll be very glad to know, because you've got a coffee break coming up soon, that I'm not going to go through all 170 trials for you. Um, what I'm going to do is, I think, give you a few examples of the ones that are actually relatively straightforward to implement. Because, you know, some of the approaches that need two years of training and a diploma in cognitive behaviour therapy might not be that easy to routinely implement everywhere. Uh, although they might be very useful for people who aren't responding to sort of more straightforward approaches. But what I'm going to talk you through is some of the sort of slightly more straightforward things. And my own favourite work is Yiska Cohen Mansfield's work in the United States. And she uses a kind of a sort of semi-personalised toolbox approach around uh, social interaction, um, activities, personalised music. And that's to kind of plan something like 10 or 15 minutes a day where a care assistant is spending time with, that, with the person with dementia, um, but in a way that's actually uh, suited to their hobbies, interests, and their level of ability. So it's a pretty straightforward intervention. You can generally train people in about a day to, to actually do it, uh, and it's relatively easy to, to implement. And she's looked at this in two very nice randomised controlled trials, one in people with dementia in care homes with agitation, um, the other in a group of people, well, she called it abnormal vocalisations. I think on this side of the Atlantic we call it shouting, but it's, it's kind of, it sounds much better if you call it abnormal vocalisations, doesn't it? But I think both of those trials showed very significant benefits for those kind of relatively simple approaches for about 10 minutes a day. And we, we did something very similar in the, in the UK as part of the trial called CALM AD, which um, some, some of you probably were involved with and supported and again showed that about 10 minutes of social interaction a day in a planned way over four weeks actually led to a very significant reduction in agitation. And one of the interesting things about this study was that it led to improvement even in people with very, very severe agitation. So it also wasn't necessarily the case that you had to go straight for a drug treatment because the agitation was severe. Those individuals often responded quite well to a simple non-drug approach. 